In SDSU 2021, we have created a Perlin Custom Member. These will only frame to the top of beams for a connection and they can be added to the beam flat or sloped. The easiest way would be in a plan view with the intersection of member and construction line that will snap to the top of the beam as well as get the slope. The member line will be added at bottom of steel for the purlin, which will be at the top of the beam flange. The purlins can be wide flange channel, cold form channel, or cold form Z. You have your toe direction. The rotation will pick up the supporting member's slope automatically, so it's reading more of a web normal scenario but you can override this. The web clearance would be moving in or out of the input line. You can pick between a bolted connection, angle, plate. I could add in a sleeve or kickers, overlap, wing plate, and manual where you would manually type in all of your values. On the left end, I'm going to add in a wing plate. Since the purlins do exactly what we tell them to do, I'm going to bump up my elevation a quarter inch to clear the weld. Then I'm going to set back a quarter inch on my wing plate material and set back from the other purlin. Since I'm here, I'll change the right end to a plate as well. In the web support, you can control the wing plate specifics such as the wing plate thickness, edge distances, or if you want to add in the center plate. I can then change the center plate height and width. I'll show the bolted center plate in a minute. Going down to the web holes, currently it defaults to zero, but I will need at least two in there, so you'll want to try to think of this as like a shear plate connection. I can then adjust my bottom edge distance and vertical spacing. I know that these are the same values for my plate as well, so I'll just copy that quick. Now, if I wanted to have the center plate bolted instead of welded, I can come back in and add in that setting. On the right end, since I have this set to a plate, maybe I want to add in a stiffener. If I were to make the adjustments on the right end of this purlin, it will automatically update the left end of the other purlin. I can add in 0 to 3 stiffeners. If I select one, then it will automatically come down the center line of the beam. I can then select what type of operation that I want on the bottom corner to avoid the weld. So I can have a clip or a cope. For this example, I'll just pick a clip and I'll put in one inch for each. Moving on to the angle connection, I know that I just want this to be one row. You can select your section size. And then if I want this to be welded or bolted, it will always be bolted to the purlins, but welded or bolted refers to going to the beam flange. Moving on to bolted, you really just have the option for the flange edge distance, which if you're dealing with a channel or a cold form channel, it will be from the heel to the hole. Then you have your gauge, which basically from the end of the purlin in. And if it's a splice, then it'll be, let's say, if I have two inches, it'd be an inch on either side. We also have the purlin connection component. This would be if you have a purlin going over the top of the beam. Then you could add in a connection component there. You have most of the same options for connections, such as the bolted, plate, angle, or manual. I'm just going to add in the plate, and then you'll see that I can add in kickers and sleeves. Going down into my sleeves, these will be the same section size as your purlins, and you'll usually be used for cold form C's or Z's since they're such light gauge, and then you can squeeze them in there. Then going on to my kickers, you'll have a section size, kicker gauge, and then you have a little gusset framing to the web of the beam as well. 